Hey everyone, welcome to our tutorial on basic camera techniques in iClone. In this tutorial we're going to be covering things like uh, focal length, uh, the depth of field and look at features, as well as the uh, camera switch function. Um, so what I'm going to do is, to get started, I'm going to play back this, uh, this scene. Uh, I kind of took this from uh, a TV show called Breaking Bad, you may have heard of it. Um, it's not exactly the same, but I just kind of uh, took my own creative spin on it. Um, you might notice the uh, characters look very similar to our uh, Chuck and Gwyn default characters. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do uh, right now is play that back and uh, keep a lookout for the uh, depth of field effects as well as the uh, lens changes and uh, camera switching and all that other good stuff. Walt, please, let's both of us stop trying to justify this whole thing and admit you're in danger. Who are you talking to right now? Who is it you think you see? Do you know how much I make a year? I mean, even if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. Do you know what would happen if I suddenly decided to stop going into work? A business big enough that it could be listed on the NASDAQ goes belly up. It disappears. It ceases to exist without me. No, you clearly don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. Alright, so we got a pretty intense scene there. Um, and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you basically how to recreate that entire uh, scene from a cinematographer perspective. Again, I'm not a, a, a professional cinematographer by any means, so I'm just going to be showing you the uh, iClone techniques that you can use. Um, to start off, we're in camera switch mode here. Now, if you want to add cameras in your scene, just as a precursor here, you can actually uh, go into the camera section and there's a number of different uh, default uh, camera scenes, uh, camera shots that you can use. Uh, for this tutorial though, I'm going to be basically closing this down. We're just going to be using my own uh, custom shots using the add camera function. So let's go take a look at the cameras we have here. Um, you can see we have all those cameras right now. What I'm going to do is delete all of them because we're going to be uh, starting from scratch here. Now we're back to the good old uh, preview camera here. Uh, so what I want to do first is we want to select our, uh, get our first shot uh, established here. So uh, the first shot is a mid shot of uh, Skylar who's there in the background. So we can select her and we can kind of like uh, pan around her if, uh, once she's selected. That's a good way to uh, orient your camera when you're, when you're moving it around is to select something and uh, right click and kind of move around it. So let's get our uh, mid shot of uh, Skylar here. It's always good to get that shot. Uh, using your uh, preview camera right there. So there we go. Something like that is good. All right, and then all we need to do is go to uh, up to our menu here and select Add Camera. And once we have our camera added, you'll see it'll appear in the Scene Manager right there. What I want to do is double click that and we'll name it right away uh, Skylar Mid. Um, it's always good to name your cameras right away to avoid any confusion. Maybe zoom out a little bit there. There we go, just so her. Uh, uh, a little bit closer in on her actually. That should be good right there. All right, so uh, basically we have our first camera set up. Now what I'll show you is the uh, lens uh, lens uh, focal lengths here. You can see in the lens section here, um, I can uh, go to presettings like 20 millimeter. Now the, uh, the shorter your focal length, the more distance there's going to seem between uh, objects in your scene. Uh, so you can see right now the bookshelf and the lamp there uh, seem really, really far away. Whereas if I go to 80 millimeter, where you have a close up and everything a lot, everything seems a lot more condensed uh, as far as distance from the viewer. So keep that in mind when you're when you're setting your scenes. I'll use I'll use 80 millimeter for this scene. Um, it's good enough for our nice uh, dialogue purposes, and we'll kind of zoom out on uh, zoom out a little bit to about where we were before. Keep in mind we're in frame one, so there's not going to be any camera changes or any any sneaky camera changes like that. So back to Skylar Mid, we have our 80, 80 millimeter lens set up there. And what I can do now is add uh, depth of field. So I'll select uh, depth of field, and you can see everything gets a little bit hazy there. Uh, what I'll do to uh, remedy that is I will select pick target, and I'm gonna select uh, Skylar's face there. And you can see that uh, her face sharpens up. She's about 229 uh, units from the camera there, and the range is set to 2000. If I set the range to something like 100, for example, uh, you'll see that the uh, background gets really blurry there, and uh, it creates a very high contrast with the character. I don't want that uh, for this particular shot. Uh, I don't want to be too harsh, so I'll just set it up to a thousand, and there we go. That's a nice. Uh, we got a nice slight blur in the background there. Um, okay, so we pretty much got our uh, our first camera set up here. 
Now, if I go to a preview camera, I already showed you how to move your camera the first uh, first way by uh, you know uh, right clicking and dragging, um, uh, holding Alt and uh, panning around. Uh, if I go to preview camera and I uh, zoom back by holding Alt and both mouse keys here, you can see there's my Skylar mid camera right there. We can make that camera disappear in the uh, scene manager here by uh, using that. We can also manually move this camera as well. Now, if I press F8. Um, that'll open up my uh, little picture-in-picture -picture view here, and I can go. I can select from here. I can select Skylar Mid, which is my first camera there, and then you can see there's my shot. You, you can notice that as well that the shading is a little bit different in here. Uh, it's actually on quick shading, which I can select from here in the menu there. If I select quick shading, everything goes a little bit more simplified. And if your if your computer is really chugging resources, it's a good idea to go to quick shading mode, uh, unless you're really interested in lighting and all that stuff. Uh, for previs, it's perfect. Uh, so quick shading mode again will uh, use up a lot less resources and your can and your um, your system will perform a lot faster. Uh, now with the uh, with the mini viewport here, you can change the size uh, by bring that higher or smaller. You can change the position of that. Um, now notice if I take my camera and I move that um, manually, you can see the result in my uh, in my little uh, picture in picture window there, my mini mini viewport. Uh, I can move that around. Let's Control Z that get it back to the original, and we can uh, rotate it as well. If I uh, move it around, we can pan around our scene like that. That's good for uh, reveal shots. And we'll just uh, go ahead and get back into our Skylar mid and uh, set that back to where we were before. There we go. About there should be good. All right, so we're just gonna press F8 and close down that mini viewport right now. So what I'm gonna do is play this back. And um, we'll go ahead and... Walt, please, let's both of us stop trying to justify this whole thing and admit you're in danger. Okay, so about here is where we want to change cameras. Now, my workflow is, uh, um, uh, the way I do it here is I'll just add another camera here. Uh, you can basically follow your own workflow as, as far as when you want to add cameras and you can move them all around and all that stuff. I'm just going to add a camera right here and we're going to call this one um, over shoulder over shoulder now over shoulder is a, is a very common shot and what we're going to do is we're going to select uh, Skylar there we're going to hold alt and right click and drag and move around her to about here and we're going to get an over the shoulder shot where she's kind of focusing on Walt let's make that uh, Skylar mid camera invisible there uh, let's focus on Walt there and let's get something about there I want to get her hair in the shot and over the shoulder, let's make sure this is, uh, yeah, 80 millimeter is fine for this shot. Um, so what I want to do here is um, you can notice that if I uh, move back on the timeline, that uh, it'll move back to my original position with the other camera there. So let's press F3 and enter into our timeline here. And let's op go ahead and open up our uh, camera over the shoulder camera here. And you can notice with, with uh, transform, we have a little uh, transform key that was at that frame uh, where we want to switch the cameras here. I can press Control plus to uh, zoom in on my camera, uh, or zoom in my timeline rather, uh, Control minus to zoom out. What I'm gonna do is just take this uh, keyframe and drag that to the very beginning there. So that'll be my whole shot. Okay, so basically right before uh, Walt is turning around, what we wanna do is we wanna switch the camera there. Um, but first what I wanna do is about here, I'm gonna actually add a depth of field uh, transition effect. So what I wanna do at the beginning of the shot is- Sure. Basically, a little bit before we switch the camera, I'm going to add a keyframe in the depth of field track right there. And then um, basically at that point, we'll select our keyframe, make sure we have the keyframe selected. And we want to have the depth of field to focus on Skylar's hair. And we can even have a, have a range of about 300, make Walt really faded out in the background there. And you can control plus to make sure we're in the right frame there. Yep, we are. And then about when he, when he turns around, so about there, what we wanna do is we wanna focus on him. So we're gonna pick target at this frame and we'll go ahead and uh, pick Walt right there. Now you'll notice a nice uh, transition there between the two, uh, um, there we go. So that's the transition we're gonna have. So it's gonna be focus on Skylar and then focus on Walt when he turns around. All right, and another thing I wanna do is at this point, I'm gonna use the look at feature as well. So. I'm gonna move this timeline up a little bit. And about here, once I have my over the shoulder camera selected, I'm going to go down here 
and I'm going to open up my constraint track, which opens up my look at right here, as well as the path. Uh, I'm going to select set free. So that'll set a nice keyframe there in my look at track. And about here is where I want to start looking at Walt's head. So we can go uh, pick target right here. And if we don't see Walt in the scene right now, we can pick his neck. Uh, you can see that I selected his RL spine 02. You can select the hierarchy anywhere here. If you uh, go down to, uh, for example, up to his uh, head, notice the camera will move slightly upwards. That'll focus on his head right there. Uh, we'll just go ahead and maybe focus on his neck. I normally like to focus on the neck. Head seems to be a bit too high sometimes. So about right here, we'll have the camera kind of uh, maybe try and go to about back there. And you can set the uh, transition You're time. You're in danger. Who are you talking to right now? Who is it? All right, so about here, there. that's about good. If, if you wanted it to be a little bit higher, uh, for example, right here, I can set a uh, keyframe in the transform track and uh, go ahead. And maybe about here, I wanted the camera to stop looking at uh, Walt so it's not moving around. Because you notice when you have the look at on, the camera's kind of shaking around according to his neck movements. So if you want to avoid that, you can actually maybe go about here and I can just uh, set free and that'll uh, take that out of the way. But then I want to make sure that I have my uh, um, positioning of my camera focused on Walt's head. So we'll do something about, uh, about there. Let's get this timeline out of the way for now. Make sure that uh, Walt's head is about there. All right, that should be good. That should be about the angle we're looking for right there. Got a nice over the shoulder shot. All right, and there we go. So let's press F3 and go into our timeline one more time. And let's take a look at that whole sequence there. And admit you're in danger. Who are you talking to right now? Who is it you think you see? All right, now um, in addition to that, uh, what I can do is I can just, of course, make that transition a little smoother by, uh, you know, adjusting our transform and and, uh, and look at uh, lengths as well. So we'll just go ahead and, you know, something like that. Or we can even have the transform before the look at. So it'll be something like this. Less movement after the look at ends. Um, so that, that's basically the shot we're going to go for right there. Now we have one more, two more shots to go here. So he says, is it you think you see? Who is it you think you see? Here's where we're going to have Skylar's reaction shot. So we'll just go ahead and add another camera here. And we'll just call this camera Skylar, whoops, Skylar reaction. There we go. And I'm going to select a Skylar here by double clicking on her hair. And we'll just uh, pan around uh, her. You can see we get a nice, uh, we could even use a nice uh, close up like that of her. Um, something like this. Uh, maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit higher. Uh, for this, for this one, we'll, do, we'll just kind of make her look a little bit smaller. Uh, let's make sure we have the uh, Skylar reaction camera selected. We're going to use a fairly uh, large focal distance for this uh, focal length, rather, and that should be about good. We kind of want to make her seem a little bit far and distant. Again, the creative, uh, creative um, associations here are totally up to you. Um, so we'll, we'll make sure we have a. Uh, her camera selected and we'll uh, change the depth of field there again. So we'll pick the target and uh, we'll go ahead and pick Skylar. And just to keep it consistent, we'll keep the uh, range for the shot at a thousand as well. And uh, maybe even zoom in a little bit. There we go. Something like that should be good. And press F3, go to the timeline one more time. We don't need this over the shoulder camera anymore. We'll close that down, open up our Skylar reaction. And in the transform track, there we have our keyframe and lens. Uh, tracks. We'll just drag those keyframes. This is kind of a lazy man's way to do it. You guys can have your own workflow if you want, but uh, this is just kind of the quick way that I do it. And so there we have our Skylar reaction shot. That it could be listed on. Uh, do you know how did you think you see? Okay, and then it's back to her. Do you? And then we're going back to the over the shoulder shot. So let's start our switching right now. Um, if I go back to frame one, um, let's make sure by pressing control plus that we're actually on frame one there and what I want to do is right click and I want to select from the camera list I want to select our first shot which was Skylar made if you remember correctly now that won't change anything in the viewport right now because I need to switch this from Skylar reaction to camera switch and now we have our first shot um, with Skylar there 
So then I'll go F3 into the timeline again. And when she's finished her uh, her little uh, diatribe there, we'll just... Uh, Trying to justify this whole thing and admit you're in danger. Okay, so about here is when we switch to the uh, over the shoulder shot. Camera list, and we select over the shoulder. And that'll change right there. Who are you talking to right now? Who is it you think you see? Jesus, who is it you think you see? And then about there, we'll switch to her reaction shot, camera list, uh, Skylar reaction, and she's kind of looking sad. She doesn't know who she sees. And then about there, we'll right click again, and camera list, and we'll go back to our over the shoulder shot. And so let's go ahead and play that back, make sure our timing's uh, fairly decent. You think you see? Do you know how much I make a year? Okay, good enough. All right, so now uh, Walt goes on on his, uh, his monologue for quite a while there. And we're just going to keep that um, going uh, as it is right there. And I want to make sure that uh, our depth of field is correct for that, uh, that over-the-shoulder camera shot. Um, so we have our over-the-shoulder depth of field. Let's go back to here. Now we have... Yeah, so make sure that uh, depth of field for the over-the-shoulder shot is selected on Walt. There we go. Yeah, okay, we got that all taken care of. And so let's go ahead and play this back. Who is it? And the only part that we're going to create a new uh, camera for right now is when he says, I am the danger. That goes belly at the up. Very end. So we'll just go ahead and uh, skip through uh, most of this stuff here. I know maybe you want to hear it, but... Don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skyler. Okay, so about maybe there, I want to create a new camera. So let's go ahead and close that down. Let's call this one um, Walt Close Up. Walt Close Up. Oops, Close Up. There we go. And this one, we're going to use a very uh, high camera le le uh, focal length here. So we'll go to 200 millimeter. And I want to make sure that we have that one selected, Walt Close Up. And that's a very, uh, very good close up right there. Let's make sure we get some of uh, Skylar's hair in the shot right there, though. And, for, and we, if we scrub ahead on the timeline, make sure his head stays in the shot most of the time because I know it's moving around. There, it's a little bit, uh, so maybe just kind of focus uh, that. Well, right there should be good. Um, maybe a little bit more. And of course, this is just touch and go right here. You can uh, totally get, get uh, your own angles all set up there. And we'll just make sure everything's set in the scene there. All right, so Walt's kind of high up, looks in a more powerful position. So F3 again, and we all will go to our Walt close-up camera. Uh, Walt close-up, there we go. We can close down these other ones and into the transform track. We can click and drag this uh, um, slider here just to uh, delete that first adjustment there. And then take this second transform keyframe and bring that all the way back to uh, somewhere around there. We'll do that later, the rest of it later. Depth of field was set at the first frame, so that's okay. And there we go. All right, so then basically from here, I, think it's, I am not in danger, Skyler. So about here, we want to camera list and we want to select close up. All right, so that's pretty much all we're going to take care of for this uh, for this particular scene. So let's go again to our camera switch and we'll play that back and see if everything is correct. Walt, please. Let's both of us stop trying to justify this whole thing and admit you're in danger. Who are you talking to right now? Who is it you think you see? Do you know how much I make a year? I mean, even if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. Do you know what would happen if I suddenly decided to stop going into work? A business big enough that it could be listed on the NASDAQ goes belly up, disappears. It ceases to exist without me. No, you clearly don't know who you're talking to. So let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think of that of me? No, I am the one who knocks. 
All right, so there we go. We're all done. Um, just a quick note on that one. All of the motions that were done by uh, both Chuck and Gwen in this tutorial uh, were simply done with the uh, body puppet tool uh, in iClone, just uh, combining them together. The timing turned out to be uh, to be quite uh, convenient for, uh, for the effect that I was going for. Um, so in this tutorial, because it's a dialogue, we're just basically dealing with uh, basic effects like depth of field to look at and, uh, and camera lens and all that stuff. Uh, in the next tutorial, we'll be dealing a little bit more with camera movement, uh, the use of dummies and linkage and, and paths and all that stuff. Uh, so stay tuned for that one and uh, thank you for watching.